If you're someone who's into clothing and fashion, then you're probably familiar with Batek. Now what is Batek? Well, aside from a style design for clothing, Batek is an important element of culture for many. As the era shifts one after another, Batek has been seeing a lot of growth recently, and that in certain brings a lot of intrigue. So, the fact that you clicked on this video suggest that you want to learn more about Batek. So I'm going to be explaining more about Batek in this presentation. As you can see here, this presentation has four sections. First, we're going to get into the premise of Batek, then onto the history of it. After that, we'll learn to make Batek. And then, uh, for the final one, we'll be learning some fun facts about Batek. So first, what is Batek? Well, Batek is a combination of art and technology, made by Indonesians. What you're seeing here, this thing, is one of the many kinds of Batek. The designs of Batek are diverse, ranging from plants, animals, geometry, to something as simple as repeated patterns. The geographic area of where it's made also affects the motives of Batek. Let's say that you're living in the mountains. The motive of Batek will then be affected by your environment. The same can also be said when you live in a jungle. You will be seeing jungle themed representations of similarities in your Batek. Now this might be contrary to a popular belief, but Batek isn't exclusively for clothing. You can find batik on books, furniture, paintings, and other things that can be expressed through art. So the main premise of batik is that it's a design. Now on to the next slide, we can see that this world map points to Indonesia, mainly Java. So how am I gonna explain this? Well, first thing, Batik came from Java, from the kingdom of Majapahit as well. Majapahit is uh, one of the kingdoms, well Majapahit is one of the biggest kingdoms in the history of Indonesia, and it was originally made for nobles and their followers, but then it became more widespread through the followers from outside the palace. And it ended up with the result of how we can now informally wear batik, regardless of our status. <clears throat> batik came from the word ambatik, a portmanteau of amba and titik, that means a fabric with many dots. Other definitions describe batik as dotting or dropping wax on fabric. Now onto the history of Batik. Batik came from the Hindu Buddha era of the 17th century, set to grow alongside the spreading of Islam in Indonesia. Batik grew rapidly in, in Java, becoming widely popular by the late 18th century or early 19th century. The technique of Batik was known to be more than a millennium old or in other words, over a thousand years old. Suspected to originate from Egypt or Sumeria, Batik grew in Africa and Asia. Some evidence also suggests that Batik came from the 12th century in Kadiri, a city in East Java. Batik could only be made with a tool called Chanting, a tool that kind of looks like a kazoo, the one I showed on the overview slide. In other words, Indonesians have known the technique of making batik since the 12th and 13th century. The golden age of batik was on the 19th century, where batik was accessible for everyone, and not just nobles and their followers, though some motives are exclusively for them, since the general public are not permitted to use said motives. With this circumstance, batik artists made several motives colors and designs that the public could use, and this process continues to this very day. As you can see here, 
The timelines of Batek are shown, from its theoretical beginning to its golden age. And now we're going to be discussing about how to make Batek. So first, we're going to have to prepare the tools and ingredients. We're going to need wax, coloring, chanting, pan and stove, pencil, a horizontal board hanging rack. And then we'll make the patterns and then proceed to use the chanting. Do note that we have to fill the chanting with liquid wax first. And then after that, we're gonna dip the fabric into a basket filled with coloring, then get it out and squeeze it. Afterwards, let it dry out in the sunlight. And then finally, we just have to boil the fabric to get rid of the wax. Now for the final section, we're gonna be covering about the trivia of Batik. We're gonna be covering five points here. The first thing, is that the National Batik Day is October 2nd. The story behind this is, at October 2nd, the UNESCO constituted Batik as a masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity, which in turn became the reason that Indonesia had a National Batik Day. And then, Batik is regionally diverse. This phenomenon can be seen in distinctions of Batik designs in various landscapes. And then after that, Batik is a big economical benefit. Batik contributes to a lot of the Indonesian economy. Indonesia once made 2.1 trillion rupees through Batik exports. And then the fourth, people used to fast before making Batik. Believed as a way to deliver prayers through strokes on fabric. And now, as for the final point, Batik is worn by many foreign notable figures. <clears throat> Batik was absolutely loved by Nelson Mandela. Aside from him, people like Vladimir Putin, Ronald Reagan, and Kate Middleton, just to name a few, also wore Batik on some occasions. So that concludes my presentation of Batik. I hope you gained a lot of information from it. As always, thank you for your time and attention, and I'll see you next time when there's another assignment. So, see ya.